I'm going to show you how to turn raw uranium into an endless supply of fuel cells with three ridiculously easy and tileable designs. Oh, and the best part, these designs are scalable to infinity. They can support factories that consume gigajoules by the second. Excited yet? Let's go. Here's what's in store. First design helps you process uranium ore simply and efficiently. Second design is an optimized, super easy to understand Coverex setup, which gives you that sweet endless uranium 235. Third and last design turns all that green metal into nuclear fuel cells. Awesome. Let's get into the basics. At this point in the game, you've unlocked the Coverex enrichment process and you have a decent production of sulfuric acid. So, if you haven't already, take some of that sulfuric acid and start mining uranium ore. Uranium is the glowy green ore you see scattered all around the map. To mine the ore, you have two options. First, and the easiest option, is to find the closest uranium patch, pipe in sulfuric acid, and process it locally. Most players do this, and a single patch lasts them until the end of their playthrough. The second option, if you're like me and enjoy over-engineering things to oblivion, is to create a fluid train station. Transport sulfuric acid to a remote patch that's rich enough to satisfy your inner Gordon Gecko, then train the extracted ores back to your processing facility. Alright, enough with the basics. Let's start with our three-step process to create endless uranium fuel cells. Step 1. It's time to process the raw ore into something more useful. We have two different uranium isotopes, U238, dark green or more stable one, and U235, light green or less stable one. Roughly speaking, for every 993 dark green ones, you get about 7 of the juicy ones. Interestingly, this is also the case in real world. To get those isotopes out of the raw ore, you need to use this building, the mighty centrifuge. It supports a few different recipes, but what we want at this point is uranium processing. One centrifuge without any beacons or modules spends 12 seconds to process 10 uranium ores and spits out one of those two isotopes. Which one, I hear you ask? Well, it's based on the possibilities we discussed earlier. It's like a, a little casino, except you have way better odds. Now you wonder, 12 seconds is just a bit too long. And it is. But remember, you can use beacons and modules. But I don't have any of those good modules and certainly not enough power to spin those beacons right now, I hear you say. And that is exactly why I made these three designs tileable so you can build more of them instead. You're welcome. All right, theory part over. Let's make a processing facility. Each blueprint has two parts. The first is the starting tile, which manages all the inputs and outputs. The second part is the modular tile, a repeatable design you can place as many times as your built throughput allows. More on throughput in a moment. Let's put down the starting tile for the uranium processing facility. There you go. Looks simple enough, doesn't it? This line brings in the raw ore. This line takes out both resulting isotopes. That's it, really. These two centrifuges can process about one and a half ores per second. That is slow. So let's put down our modular tiles, but how many? 36 of these machines can consume one full red belt of uranium ore. And we have two machines per tile, which means 18 tiles in total, minus the starting one, of course. So put down 17 more tiles and you are done here. To make it easier and avoid mistakes, I've set the grid size for these tiles. So hold down the shift key and drag your mouse for maximum satisfaction. There you go. Step 2. The Coverex Enrichment Process Sure, you could take that tiny bit of U-235 you've managed to scrounge up and turn it straight into fuel cells. But where is the fun in that? Instead, let's embrace the late gratification with the Coverex enrichment process, where efficiency meets just a hint of masochism. What's Coverex? Well, the lead Factorio designer named it after himself. Vanity? Maybe. Clever? Definitely. But let's not get distracted. Here's how it works. Open up a centrifuge and take a look at the Coverex recipe. Here's the deal. As input, it takes 40 unstable isotopes, U-235, plus 5 stable ones, or U-238. Now the unstable ones are the shiny ones, which we are after, and the dark green boring ones are the stable ones. Processing time is 60 seconds, and the output of this process is 41 
unstable shiny green ones so we've produced one more and two of the dark green ones so we basically consumed three of them so essentially you're multiplying your precious u235 by just over 10 percent but here is the tricky part when the cycle finishes the centrifuge spits everything out then it waits for you to load it back up with a fresh batch of ingredients before starting another cycle this creates a unique challenge because the enriched uranium-235 is super rare early on, so you need a fair amount of it to get the enrichment process rolling. Therefore, you'll need to manually pull the shiny ones from the centrifuge, mix it with the dark ones, and reload the machine. But this is Factorio, where manual labor is just a bug waiting to be automated. Here's where things get interesting, or annoying depending on your perspective. If you drain too much of those light greens, the process can't start. On the other hand, if you don't drain enough, the centrifuge will clog and stop. The key is finding the right balance, ensuring the centrifuge has what it needs to keep running, while also skimming off some of that light green delight for future use. It's a little like spinning plates, just radioactive ones. Some players find this process annoying. We prefer character building. Again, Enough theory. Time to set up your enrichment process and get that sweet glowy uranium flowing. Put down a centrifuge, open it, and select the Coverex enrichment process. Now we want to make two merry-go-rounds or cyclone systems around our centrifuge using these four chests. Two up top are for the unstable isotope and the ones at the bottom are for the dull boring ones and inserters to complete each loop. Yes, it's possible to do all this with just one set of chests, but the intention here is to make this super easy to understand and follow. We also need two belts to bring in each type of uranium to feed the system. The inner belt carries the dark and the outer one is for the bright variant. That's great. The last segment is the skimmer mechanism which we place right here. Don't be intimidated by all this. I will explain every single thing shortly. Splendid. This is the skeleton of our system and is as dumb as a bag of rocks at this moment. So let's give it a tiny brain, shall we? First, we want to know the exact number of items in the entire system. Take that green wire and follow me. Connect all the chests, all the inserters and the centrifuge together. Then open each of the inserters, except for the skimmer one. Enable the read hand content setting and change it to hold. This lets us account for all the items, even those being held by an inserter. Finally, this tiny green network should also be connected to this power pole here and also to this segment of the light green belt, just after the splitter. Now open up that centrifuge and enable read contents and include in crafting so it tells us what it holds inside, even when it's busy working. Okay, stop. Before we get into the details, let's think for a second about what we want to accomplish. We want the system to take enough uranium variants to bootstrap itself, specifically 40 light green ones or U-235 and 5 dark ones which are U-238. Unless this centrifuge has 40 light green uraniums, its circuit network won't allow any of it to move to the next tile. It plays the selfish game, and doing it sequentially like this is absolutely necessary if we want to bootstrap our tiles as quickly as possible. Once this system is running smoothly, it will open the light green gate, allowing the next centrifuge in the system to get its share. On the other hand, this skimmer right here won't take anything until we have enough to spare. When we do, it will carefully skim off one precious light green uranium, so the system is never starved. Time for some circuit play. Let's block this belt first. This step is super important. Click on this contraption and set the filter to allow light green to pass only if there are more than 40 bright greens in this tile. Also, set the priority on the splitter to ensure the goodies are available to the inserter first. Now let's focus on this inserter in charge of the light green input. First, set the stack size to 1 so we have a finer control over the intake. Then we ask it to take in the unstable green ones only if we have less than 40. This assures we have 40 light greens before the gate is open for the next tile. We also want to control how much dark green we take in so we don't jam the system. Since we only need 5 per cycle, click on this intake inserter. Set the stack size to 1 and configure it to work only if we have fewer than 5 dark greens. See? I told you this is easy. 
Next, let's handle the skimmer. Set the stack size to 1, so it's only allowed to skim light green if we have more than 40. Can you believe we are done with the circuit part? But what happens to the freshly skimmed enriched uranium? Well, we channel it to the output line, but it's important to remember that we are not done with that line yet. More on that in the next step. Let's feed the system with plenty of dark ones, which we should have by now, and some light ones, and see its behavior. As you can see, the tile won't let any 235 pass through until it can bootstrap. Look at the signals shown on the power pole. The system is orchestrated in such a way that we have exactly what we need. Nothing more, nothing less. Super optimized for your pleasure. Time to place the modular tile. It's exactly like the starter tile, except it has no input signals. I've set up the grid for it so you can hold down shift and drag to create as many as you want with ease. Let's make a few and see how they take turns coming online. Isn't that just beautiful? Now for the final touch. We want the entire enrichment array to bootstrap as quickly as possible. To achieve this, we'll have the earlier tiles help the later ones by rotating the enriched U235 into a priority loop before allowing it to flow out into the fuel cell factory. How, you ask? Place a trusty splitter and set its priority to send U235 back into the array. Once all the tiles are operational and the intake belt is saturated, the remaining precious isotope will be redirected to the fuel factory. Speaking of which, step 3, the final step, the fuel cell factory. It literally cannot get easier than this. It's a basic three ingredient build. Let's put down the starter tile first. Light and dark greens plus iron plates equals green marshmallows of power. 8 gigajoules each. Here come some more tiles for good measure. But it gets better. Each light green uranium creates 10 fuel cells, literally drowning your factory in raw potential. Feeling the abundance yet? Okay, so to turn that raw potential into actual power, there are two super important steps. First, like and subscribe if this tutorial helped you. And second, go watch my tutorial on how to build different sized nuclear power plants so you can consume those fuel cells, because the factory must grow.